two-minute anaesthesia and critical care pre-oxygenation. Pre-oxygenation prior to airway management is an essential technique to maintain safety by increasing oxygen stores prior to a period of apnea. The process aims at exchanging nitrogen to oxygen in the lungs, thus increasing the safe apnea time, which is usually defined as a saturation level greater than 9%. It's characteristically indicated for rapid sequence induction, whereby you would aim for an end tidal oxygen concentration of greater than 90%. This can be achieved by either tidal breaths for three minutes or four vital capacity breaths. The atmosphere is composed of mainly nitrogen 78% but also oxygen 21% and a selection of other agents including carbon dioxide, neon and hydrogen and thus pre increases the percentage of oxygen. Multiple factors can affect the efficiency of pre-oxygenation. Examples include equipment, procedural and patient. Equipment factors include mask seal, this could be due to facial pathology or inadequately side mask low flow oxygen rates, rebreathing within the circuit, procedural factors including inadequate time for pre-oxygenation and patient factors linked to compliance, intrapulmonary shunt from pneumonia or edema, low FRC due to obesity, pregnancy or patient positioning, and airway pathology from foreign body secretions or trauma. As discussed, there's multiple factors which affect pre-oxygenation. One of those key factors is the FRC, functional residual capacity and this is a volume of air remaining in the lungs after normal passive exhalation. It's classically quantified as 30 mls per kilo and thus in a 70 kilo individual it's possible to quantify the oxygen volume and thus the apnea period. So 21% this results in 441 mls of oxygen and this 100 seconds or 100% oxygen this is 2.1 litres and thus an apnea time of greater than 8 minutes. The physiology of apnea is based on three key principles. Oxygen usage, CO2 production and alveolar pressure. During this period of apnea, oxygen is still consumed at 250 mL per minute. And the FRC provides the storage of oxygen, however it's solely consumed during this period of time. CO2 is still produced, but due to its high water solubility, only 10% is removed by the lungs and thus builds up in the plasma leading to hypercapnia and acidosis. This leads to an imbalance in the volume of the lung leading to a loss of volume. In the presence of a patent upper airway, gas will move into the respiratory tree and thus provide the basis of apnea oxygenation. However, in the presence of a closed airway, there will be ongoing gas uptake without replacement and this may lead to the development of negative intrathoracic pressure resulting in airway collapse. The consequences of pre-oxygenation are twofold, the gas and the procedural effects. The procedural effects relate to hemodynamic compromise by the application of CPAP. The gas effects relate to hypoxemia. These could be direct. These include hypoxic pulmonary vasoconstriction, reabsorption atelectasis and systemic vasoconstriction. The indirect effects relate to prolonged exposure and thus worse outcomes in MI and stroke. Reabsorption atelectasis remains one of the most important factors to consider and the percentage of nitrogen in room air is high and as it is poorly water soluble it remains present in the gas phase in the alveoli and thus maintains patency. The process of oxygen wash in and nitrogen wash out is an exponential function. The rate of this process is based on the time constant. The time constant is based on the size of the FRC. One time constant is 63%, two is 86%, three is 93 and finally four is 98%. Four time constants for the nitrogen washout curve is approximately two minutes and thus we pre-oxygenate for three minutes to provide a margin of safety.